This is a complete updated roundup of the best live streaming software for Windows PC right now. We're gonna look at all the leading options, what's new, talk the pros, the cons, and then we're gonna finish up with my top recommendations, no matter your use case. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're seeing value in this video, make sure you're hitting that big like button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. So it's a great time to be a live streamer right now with a ton of awesome options, whether you're going live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, LinkedIn, or insert your other live streaming platform here as well. But all those options make for a hard call and a lot of wasted time trying and testing what's out there to see which one is the best one for you. I know, because I've done just that. So in this video, we're gonna run through my shortlist for the leading options right now one by one, including the strengths, the weaknesses, the pricing, and my recommendations, so everything that you need to know. So the overall landscape for live streaming software is getting very saturated. You've got things like OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, XSplit, Wirecast, vMix, NVIDIA Shadowplay, Lightstream, StreamYard, Zoom, BeLive, and there's others as well. So we're gonna jump straight into the short list, which is my top options, and we're gonna ignore the options that aren't worth your time. So let's go ahead and bring out that progress bar and start off with option number one. The first option then is OBS Studio, and this one is probably one of the most popular options out there when it comes to live streaming software because of the price tag. This one is 100% free and what you get for free is pretty amazing there's a lot of advanced features and controls and everything in there to really help you customize up and dial in your live stream but i will say that the overall interface and the user experience in obs really isn't that intuitive or that easy to navigate through and find everything so if you're an absolute beginner and you've never done anything like this before then there is going to be a fairly steep learning curve for you given all of those features and controls and given that pretty unintuitive interface now in regards to which platforms you can stream to, all of the options I'm covering off in this video will have support for all of the major platforms. And they've also got support for RTMP, which means that you can pretty much broadcast anywhere. Now with OBS being such a popular option, it means that there's a lot of support that you can get access to if you need help. Places like YouTube are a great place to go to help you get set up, but there's also the OBS community forums and places like Reddit as well. So even though it is more on the complicated end of things, it's pretty easy to get access to support to help you get it all set up. Now I'm someone who does like having access to these advanced features and being able to dial in a specific bitrate for the audio or for the video based on the computer and based on the internet connection that I'm live streaming from. But OBS isn't my go-to or isn't my top pick because I really think that the overall interface is not intuitive enough to be able to quickly fix things and apply settings on the fly when you're actually live. You're still gonna have to dive into menus upon menus to quickly be able to make those changes. Now, one of the other popular features with OBS is its recording capabilities. So you're able to directly record your live stream while you're live streaming, but also you have the ability to use OBS to record a video without actually going live. So you wanna do a screen recording or you wanna record your webcam, you can actually use OBS for these as well. But that feature also exists in the next two options that I've got for you as well. So besides the overall complexity with the settings and the interface, one other thing that you need to be aware of is if you are looking to bring guests into your live stream to run a Q&A session or a live interview. This isn't a feature that OBS actually has natively. It is still possible, but it's definitely not simple. And that's where the next two options really shine. So overall, I'd say OBS is for someone who doesn't want to spend any money because it's free. Uh, also someone who is probably at that intermediate to advanced level because of all those advanced features and controls and things that are in there, but also because of the complexity in getting it all set up and managing it all while you're live. Or for someone who's happy to invest some time in figuring all of that stuff out to get it set up. Now that brings us to option number two, which is StreamYard. Now this is a completely different offering. This isn't something that you download and install on your computer. This one would just run in your web browser, which means that you don't need to have a powerful computer to be able to run it and to be able to run it well. So in a lot of regards, it's almost the complete opposite to something like OBS. The interface is so intuitive. It's so easy to use. If you're an absolute beginner, you're gonna be able to figure this out really, really quickly. 
you won't have to spend the time configuring up different scenes or different layouts to use in your live stream. There are literally presets that you can click on to switch between different views. Now what you won't find in StreamYard is all of those advanced settings, things like being able to really dial in your bit rate for your video or for your audio, or really have access to things like video layers. StreamYard just makes live streaming so simple. And there's a couple of big standout features that I really, really like about StreamYard. The first one is the ability to bring in guests. We said that you could do it with OBS, but it was difficult, bit of a nightmare. With StreamYard, it's literally click of a button. You're generated a URL that you can then send out to whoever you'd like to bring in as a guest, and StreamYard manages the whole process from there. Your guests can join from any device, their phone, their iPad, their computer, and it supports having up to 10 people on screen at once. The other big standout feature with StreamYard is how easy they make multi-streaming or simulcasting. If you wanna broadcast live to Facebook and YouTube or Twitter all at the same time, you don't need to run through an additional service like Restream or Switchboard. It's actually all built into StreamYard itself. You just select which destinations you'd like to broadcast live to. You can even customize up the title and the description on each of those platforms. And then when you go live, it's automatically pushed out to those places for you. And all the comments and interactions, they're all aggregated back into StreamYard for you. So you could feature comments on your screen from YouTube, from Facebook, all in the one live stream with no extra work from you. So that is a really powerful feature and it's something that they've actually implemented so well to make it so intuitive and so easy for you to be able to do it. Now, while I've said it doesn't have all the advanced features as OBS or even the next option that I'm gonna cover, it does still have more than enough in there to help you create an amazing live stream. You can still bring in videos, you can still bring in images or animations as overlays to help you create a more professional live stream. But I would say the biggest thing that StreamYard right now is missing for me is keyboard shortcuts or being able to switch between the different views or different scenes just with a keyboard button press. If they had that functionality, it would make it so much easier to use StreamYard with things like the Elgato Stream Deck to really help you control and run your live streams without needing to rely on moving your mouse cursor around and clicking on the right thing while you're live. Now I'm a big fan of StreamYard. These guys are actively listening and engaging with their users to help build this thing out. And where it's already come in the last 12 months is amazing. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where they take this. Now in regards to pricing, you've got three options. There is a free plan which gives you access to a lot of the features, but it does have a StreamYard branding or StreamYard watermark on your live stream. So I'd recommend to remove that by jumping onto one of their paid plans, either the basic plan at $20 per month, which is gonna give you access to bringing in those 10 guests and the multi-stream feature as well. Or if you need to broadcast in full HD 1080p and you wanna restream or rebroadcast to up to eight platforms, then that's where you'd be jumping on their pro plan for $39 per month. So I think StreamYard is an awesome option for someone, whether you are an absolute beginner, never live streamed before, maybe identify as someone who is tech averse, right through to someone who is more at that advanced level. But someone who's not looking to be able to dial everything in and configure everything up, but someone who's probably looking for that happy medium of control versus simplicity. And also it's probably the best option right now for creating a live stream where you are gonna bring in guests and to have up to 10 of them on screen at once. So that brings us to option number three, which is vMix. Now vMix is probably the most professional and most advanced live streaming software on PC. It packs in an absolute ton of features and you can really customize this up anything from a simple one camera live stream right through to multiple camera broadcast solution. The overall interface and the usability is definitely on the more complicated end of things, but I will say I do prefer this interface far more than the interface inside of OBS. Even though you've got so many more features and advanced controls in here than you do have in OBS, I do think it's easier to go through and find them and to change things and make adjustments while you actually are live. They've got great built-in support for live streaming hardware from top level professional grade hardware that you can use to control and run and manage your live streams right down to consumer grade hardware like the Elgato Stream Deck. And I like this because it really bridges that gap and gives you the best of both worlds. You don't need to just be doing pro level top broadcast grade productions. You can use vMix and set up something pretty amazing from your home setup as well. 
Now vMix does have a guest feature, which is pretty good if you wanna bring guests into your live stream. It's not as good or as simple as StreamYard, but it's a lot better than a lot of the other options out there. And depending on which version you go, you can have up to eight guests on your live stream. Now I'm someone who likes, uses, and appreciates having access to advanced features and controls. I'm really being able to dive in and customize everything up for the specific computer that I'm using, but also the amount of bandwidth that we've got access to as well. So be able to dial in the specific bit rates for the audio and the video, right through to customizing up the look and feel of each individual video source or video camera. So vMix for me ticks all of those boxes, especially when comparing it to something like OBS. vMix feels much much more like professional grade live streaming software, which it is. But probably the biggest standout feature for me with vMix is ISO recording or isolated channel recording. So if you've got multiple cameras that you're bringing into your live stream that you're switching between or multiple video inputs, you can actually have an isolated recording or an individual recording of each one of those camera angles or video tracks recording directly to your computer as an individual file. So this way, if you wanna edit down your video afterwards, you're not just left with the completed recording of whatever it was that you broadcasted, you've actually got all of the individual video assets, video cameras there that you can actually use to edit something custom afterwards. So this also makes vMix a really powerful video creation system, not just live streaming, giving you the ability to record a top-down camera if you're gonna be writing something, your primary camera to record you speaking, maybe even your iPad as well if you wanna bring that in too. But recording all of these in sync all at once with one program to separate video tracks that you can go and edit up afterwards or at a later date. So I think that's an amazing feature and it's something that's gonna be really powerful if you are gonna be setting up for a professional live stream solution or even content creation solution as well. Now in regards to pricing, there's actually quite a few options. There is a free version available, which is heavily restricted. So you've got a maximum recording resolution of 768 by 576. But then depending on your needs, you've got the basic HD license for $60, the HD version for 350. Now this will unlock that guest feature, but it will let you only bring in one guest. Then there's the 4K version for $700, which will unlock a lot more features. And this is probably where most people would probably sit. This will give you access to bring in up to four guests onto your stream. And this is also where you unlock the ISO recording feature or the multi-corder. And then if you wanna unlock all of the features, then the pro version sells for $1,200. So depending on your needs and the features that you're after, it's awesome to see that they've got quite a few different offerings to make it more achievable. So I think vMix is a great option for someone who is looking for that most professional solution with the most amount of features, the most amount of customizability, but also having things like the guest feature built in and also having the ISO recording or the multi-track recording as well. And if you are someone who is at that beginner stage but is interested in vMix, I don't think it's a stretch to be able to get up to speed relatively quickly in there. Once you navigate around and figure out where everything is and how it all works together, it's actually fairly intuitive to use and to get great results with. So for me personally, my top two are vMix and StreamYard. And which one of those two I'll use will come down to what I'm looking to achieve with a specific live stream. So if I do need all of those advanced features, controls, and really wanna configure everything up, it's gonna be vMix. And if I wanna do something simple and quick and bring in guests without needing to configure anything up, then it's going to be StreamYard, hands down. So those are my picks for best live streaming software on Windows right now in 2020. Now, no matter which one you choose, you can easily take the quality of your live streams up a notch by adding in some simple graphics and animations. Check out the video linked on screen where we'll show you how you can create these things for use in your live streams. And I'll see you in the next one.